Hi there. This Brexit fiasco has turned into a fiasco of a general election, UK election 2019. With the latest announcement of Nigel Farage backing out of taking on the Conservatives. You know, I consider my brother as a sort of microcosm uh, perhaps he's representative of the Brexit movement, I don't know. He is pretty much because he's been anti-European, like, well, <laughs> for 40 years. Um, and for the last 10 years, he's been a supporter of UK, UK Inter uh, Independence Party. And uh, this year, he's ended up joining three parties. The Conservative Party, UKIP, which he was a member of for years, and the Brexit Party, which he joined recently, of course. Um, but I feel sorry for him. I mean, you know, he, he he's come up with 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 evidence to show that uh, that Johnson's deal, uh, withdrawal of deal, is actually no better uh, than Theresa May's deal. And that uh, even Johnson himself doesn't realise that, in fact, it is the same deal as Theresa May's deal. Um, and uh, so he's topping mad uh, with Johnson, as you can imagine. Um, in fact, he was hoping that the Brexit party uh, would sweep away the professional neocon uh, politicians that, that inhabit Parliament at the moment. Uh, neocons, corporatists, statists, uh, people that are working uh, for the uh, for the world elite, the world economic elite, uh, which is made up of Indians, Indonesians, and Chinese and, and Russians, um, who are carving up the world uh, between them and um, between the corporations that uh, that they uh, represent and and enjoy the patronage of. Um, so. <clears throat> as far as my brother is concerned, the Tories are really no better than the neocon, uh, neocon Democratic Party members of, of the USA, uh, to give you a comparison. Um, and uh, the, the, the Conservatives are in the pay of, of the corporations from day one and have never got away from them. And it's all just tokenism and uh, pulling the wool over people's eyes. Um, so that's one conspiracy theory he has. Um, UKIP, he was a very keen supporter of, as you can imagine. Uh, but there's a conspiracy theory that UKIP's been taken over by a crowd of very dodgy people indeed, um, who are not just Islamophobic, uh, which would be acceptable enough uh, to people like my brother, but uh, they are actually possibly, possibly neo-fascist, in fact, uh, which is something that my brother would never go down the road he would never follow. Um, and he was always at pains to, to tell me that there was not a fascist in the UKIP, um, like ever, like at all. And now there's a conspiracy theory that the, that the management or the leadership of UKIP has been uh, radicalised um, by MI5 in order to discredit uh, the Brexit movement. Um, and so, of course, uh, obviously, as you can imagine, my brother is is a no deal uh, Brexiter, uh, and he wants to sweep away the, the the professional status corporatist politicians that rule the United Kingdom and the USA, for that matter, and indeed Europe. Um, and he wants a no deal. Now it looks like the Brexit Party and Nigel Farage are softening their stance on Brexit. Um, it seems that they are uh, de facto supporters of the Johnson deal um, and are kind of withdrawing uh, their opposition to, to Johnson uh, in order to become a tactical party uh, to get Johnson's deal past the winning post uh, by standing in only those constituencies where the Lib Dems or uh, or Labour uh, have, a, have a majority in order to entice uh, Labour voters away uh, from Corbyn's rather lacklustre deal 
vis-a-vis uh, -vis the um, soft Brexit deal that he, that he says he can negotiate in six months, but it will probably take a considerable longer time than that. Um, and uh, but um, so he's hopping mad, uh, hopping mad with the Brexit party now. Um, and I honestly think that given all this, he, he, he is probably considering not actually voting at all in this election. You know, and you wonder actually how many more people are very, very disillusioned like him, disillusioned uh, with their old favourite UKIP, disillusioned with the Brexit Party, the, the latest disillusioned certainly with the Conservative Party, uh, that basically cuts no ice with them no matter how much talk there is of hardline Brexiters and the Conservative Party. Uh, they're, just, uh, they're just con artists as far as my brother is concerned. And he wants, he's looking at the Brexit party to be a clean, sweep, new broom party. Uh, but it's obviously not going to be that. Um, and uh, they obviously don't have the resources, in actual fact, uh, to, to sweep away uh, the old dust of, of, of Parliament and to have a brand new, um, <clears throat> brand new sort of shiny, smiley uh, Parliament full of people that are just like you and me uh, running the country instead of the, the these... Um, uh, political oligarchs and professionals uh, and PR spin merchants that, that we've got currently, according to this view. Um, so I wonder, in fact, you know, how many people uh, who are disillusioned with all the parties at right this moment are going to vote, vote for anything. Um, but I suppose if they don't vote, uh, that means that, uh, that Remain will probably happen. Uh, but in a way, um, you can sort of see their logic because, you know, if, if, if Article 50 was revoked and Britain just remained in the UK de facto, if the Lib Dems got their way, um, then I suppose this would galvanise a more grassroots uh, movement, even than Farage's Brexit party, uh, determined to take Britain out of the EU uh, without any negotiation. In other words, a clean sweep, no, no deal Brexit. Um, I mean, I was wondering how much more grassroots you can get <laughs> than UKIP or the Brexit Party, but I mean, I can actually see possibly there is a more of a grassroots movement that could actually arise um, if, if Article 50 was revoked and by some undemocratic means the Lib Dems managed to keep Britain uh, remaining in the EU. Um, and this, this grassroots grassroots movement would not just be about getting rid of uh, stopping Britain or getting Britain out of the EU, it would be getting rid of all the politicians that got Britain in the common market in the first place in 1974. Um, and uh, which, you know, you would have thought uh, that the Brexit party would have represented and used to represent. And I think a lot of party members in the Brexit party are going to be scratching their heads saying, what on earth has happened? What is this Nigel Farage? who isn't even the leader of the party, what on earth is he on about? You know, and uh, one is reminded of Colonel Gaddafi, you know, uh, not, not in fact officially in charge of Libya, but certainly doing his will from his tent uh, out in the desert and everybody jumping to everything that he said, uh, because it just wasn't, um, wasn't healthy to go otherwise, do you know what I mean? Um, and here's Nigel Farage, you know, the little oligarch, of the Brexit party who's not actually uh, actually in charge of it uh, officially, uh, sort of acting exactly like Colonel Gaddafi, it seems to me, really, in his own, his own petty little way. <laughs> nothing, on the, like, nothing like the bloody scale of Gaddafi's uh, regime of terror, mind you, but, but uh, you know, the same kind of principle as being applied. Um, so I'm afraid I don't really know where my brother stands. I mean, I think I think he could always say to hell, to hell with you all and not vote at all. And, and if a lot of people voted, uh, didn't vote, um, you know, so what if, if, if Britain remains in the EU? Uh, what's really, really needed is, is to get behind the Brexit issue and look at the real issues uh, behind getting Britain out of, the, out of the European Union with no deal. Uh, and what really, really needs to change is a, is a bit more than just the faces of the party. You need to have a complete uh, political cultural change in order to get Britain out of the EU. Otherwise, it just isn't possible. Otherwise, you might as well remain uh, and remain until such time as people really begin to see uh, that the EU is a scam 
um, and that no good can ever come out of, of belonging to the EU uh, because of its corporate, corporatist statist uh, attitudes towards everything and its rule book and its uh, and, and its and its French German legal system, which isn't Anglo-Saxon at all, uh, and never has been, and never pretends to be so. Um, so I mean, you know, it, it's going to take more than the Brexit Party or UKIP to get Britain out of the EU. Uh, this would be the view of, of people like my brother, um, and you wonder how many more people like him are, are around. Uh, people that are actually not national socialist or fascist because. They don't like UKIP because it's sort of gone too far right, even you know, even for them. Uh, well, they would deny they are right wing. You see, uh, they they would say that we're in fact libertarian, um, centrist, reasonable people uh, who who are neither national socialists nor uh, nor liberal uh, in that sense. So I don't know. It's it's Brexit. The whole election is a ter terrific farce now. It's becoming farcical by the day. Um, and um, we could end up with a with a hung parliament anyway, and another three years of farcical parliamentarianism, uh, mucking everything up for people that are trying to wait for Britain to make some kind of decision about whether or not uh, to be a part of the European Union.